As the football season winds down, it's the perfect time to go to a game. SeatGeek takes tickets from all across the web and puts them into one area, making buying simple. They put these on a 1 to 100 scale, so you know you're getting a good deal. Plus, if you haven't done it yet, use my promo code KTO on your first purchase. That's good for $20 off. Big shout out to SeatGeek for the sponsor. Now, let's get into this video. In 1970, tragedy struck when a plane carrying Marshall University's football team crashed into a hillside. It was just two miles from the Tri-State Airport in West Virginia. It killed 37 Marshall football players, a coach, the university's AD, and 25 team boosters. Following the crash, the NCAA couldn't do much to try and help. All they could do was give special permission to let freshmen play on the varsity team. Marshall had to scrap together a team of walk-ons, players who weren't on the flight, and those freshmen. For the next decade, they didn't experience a single winning season. You don't plan on disaster, but we need to be ready for anything. When you're as big as the National Football League, you need rules for everything, even if that means worst case scenario. So that brings us to the question, what happens if an NFL team suffers a tragedy and players die? The league does have a set of procedures following a tragedy, and here's exactly what they have said in regards to this topic. They present two different scenarios. The first is described as a near disaster. This means 15 or fewer players die or cannot play for the rest of the season. The second scenario is labeled as a disaster. This means 15 or more players die. Let's take a look at the first scenario. The tragedy struck team would be required to play the remainder of their games, but the league would try and help them out by giving them number one priority on waiver claims. Let me explain the waiver wire simply. Every time a player in the NFL gets cut, the waiver wire operates on a 24 hour time frame in which other teams can submit a claim for that player. If you got priority number one, that means you get first dibs every time a player's cut. It can be great being number one on the waiver claims prior to week one but in the middle of the season, you're really not getting all that much. Let's say a team lost 10 players. They would have to replace those 10 with a mix of practice squad guys, possibly free agent signings, and waiver claims. This is the same process that happens when a team places guys on injured reserve. It's not a great situation, obviously. But now, let's look at the worst scenario, the disaster. If a team loses 15 or more players in a tragedy, the commissioner decides whether or not the team will continue their season. If he decides to let them keep playing, then the near disaster plan is put into place. But if the commissioner decides to end their season, a restocking draft would occur, and the team would automatically get the number one pick in the next year's NFL draft. Also, if one of the team's quarterbacks die, they are allowed to draft another team's third quarterback. If an entire NFL team died, it's pretty much a certainty that the team's season will be canceled. For the restocking draft, other teams would be able to protect 32 of their 53 players, and only two of three quarterbacks. Because this is a huge range of just mostly backups, I will show the possible quarterbacks that could be on this list. Long story short, it would be a very tough situation, obviously. Even though there's really no way of knowing how this sort of tragedy would play out, an expansion draft in the past is somewhat comparable to what happens in a restocking draft. But there is some key differences. Instead of protecting 32 of a team's 53-man roster, each team would list five unprotected players for the new team to choose from. This is usually a mix of guys with bad contracts and just some of the lesser players on their team. In 2002, the Houston Texans became the 32nd franchise in the NFL. Just two months prior to the NFL draft that season, the league held the expansion draft for the newly found Texans. I'm going to show some clips from the actual 2002 expansion draft, and as you can see, the rules were that Houston could claim 30 to 42 players from this draft, or 38% of their salary cap in 2002, which was just over $27 million. This would have been a weird event to pay attention to as a fan of any other team. You'd be watching just for the possibility that some of the players on your team could be taken. Here's a cool piece of NFL history. The first pick in the expansion draft was offensive tackle Tony Baselli. Previously, he had played for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Turns out that Baselli was drafted in 95 by the Jaguars, and that was the year that they became an expansion franchise themselves. He was their first NFL draft pick ever. Oh yeah, by the way, he never played for Houston. He would get hurt, and he would retire following the season. We actually saw three expansion franchises added in only seven years. The Texans in 02, the Browns in 99, and the Jaguars in 95. Before Jacksonville, it had been 20 years since the last expansion team was added. So that brings us to this question. Will the NFL add another expansion franchise? I found an ESPN article discussing the possibility of a team in London or Mexico City. 
But based on how the NFL is currently set up, it's extremely unlikely we'll ever get another expansion franchise. It would require a ton of change and realignment for conferences and divisions. But there is still a chance that a current team could be relocated. The NFL is aiming to establish a franchise in the UK by 2022, with the active support of the UK government. The four games played a year in London consistently sell out. With the obvious interest from fans over there, it seems like the NFL is really pushing this. Now, this wouldn't be ideal for teams with travel and whatnot, but the league hasn't said no, so right now, it's a maybe. So as many of you know, I'm a Browns fan, and I found something fascinating. Of all the misery and embarrassment the Browns have shown us for nearly 20 years, this is how they got their first ever win as an expansion franchise. Out. Long high ball, lots of guys going for it. Fight in the end zone, it's tied by the Browns! The Cleveland Browns have won the game at a 56 yard!